ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد uh, the next uh, thing that the author talks about is the wasting of water or the, the forbiddance of wasting water um, and the recommendation or the obligation of economizing water. So he says economizing the use of water even if one is in front of the sea. And then he mentions a hadith. Uh, he says, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يغسل أو كان يغتسل بالصاع ويتوضأ بالصاع إلى خمسة أمداد ويتوضأ بالمد. Or the, he mentions the hadith from Anas رضي الله عنه that the Prophet وسلم, used to perform ghusl um, with a saw to five mud. So Anas عنه, is giving us the uh, amount of water that the Prophet وسلم, used to use for ghusl and for, and for wudu. So he says the first one is the mud, which is for uh, wudu. So the mud is when you cup your two hands together and fill them with water. So uh, this would be a mud. And the saw is four of those, so he would do for, for uh, uh, ghusl, he would use between four and five mud. So the Prophet ﷺ would complete his whole wudu with one handful or, or one scoop of his cupped hands, and he would perform ghusl with an amount of water that was between four and five uh, of his cupped hands. Um, and he says related by al-Bukhari and Muslim. So this is the first hadith that he uses to show the uh, the recommendation at the very least of economizing water and not wasting water. And then the second hadith that he mentions, he says, or he mentions from Ubaidullah or Ubaidullah ibn Abi Yazid, uh, that he narrated a hadith from Ibn Abbas, and the Rajulan Qala ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, Kam yakfiani min al wudu, Fakala mud, Kal kam yakfiani lil ghusl, Kala saw, Fakala Rajul la yakfini, Kala la ummalak. قَدْ كَفَى مَنْ هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِنْكَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ Or a man came to Abdullah ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهما and he said, how much water would be sufficient for me to perform wudu with? So he said, a mud, which is again the, the cupped waters, the cupped hands uh, to hold water. And he said, how about for ghusl? And he said, asaa, which is the four again of those. Uh, so then he said, but this isn't enough for me. So he said a phrase which in Arabic is considered a sort of insult or a sort of putting someone down when they do something that's unacceptable. So he said, La ummalak, or you, O oh, you who has no mother. So he's, it's an insult to him. He said, it was, it was sufficient for those or someone who was better than you, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he says, This hadith was narrated by, uh, it was narrated by Al Tabarani in Al Kabir. And Ahmed and Al Bazar, uh, and its narrators are trustworthy. One hand or two? This is a. What? Or is this a no, no, the, the cupped. Two. So one. Two hands. Yeah, so the one amount of cupped hands together. In um, this hadith, uh, it was declared authentic by uh, Ahmed Shakir when he did his uh, commentary or his uh, verification of Musnad Ahmed and also uh, Al Wadi'i um, in his book As Sahih Al Musnad. So this is an authentic hadith from Abdullah ibn Abbas. Um, so this shows, again, it, it reinforces the amount and it shows that when people would complain about this or say that it wasn't enough, uh, people didn't then say, oh, well, you know, just take more. Then they would stick to it and say, oh, no, this was enough for someone who's better. So you're not even as good as him. So there's no reason why you shouldn't be using this amount either. Then he continues and he mentions a hadith from... Uh, if you're following in the book, it says Abdullah ibn Umar. It should actually be Abdullah ibn Amr, um, who is Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. So if you're following in the book, you can change that. And the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam marra bi Sa'adin wa huwa yatawadda faqal ma hadha sarf ya Sa'ad faqal afil wudu'i sarf qal na'am wa in kunta ala nahrin jarin or that uh, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed by Sa'ad while he was performing wudu and he said, O oh Sa'ad, what is this waste of water? So he said, and is there a waste when it comes to wudu? 
uh, so the Prophet ﷺ, or it's attributed to him that he said uh, yes, or that yes, even if it's upon a flowing river. So meaning even if you're in front of a river, then this would be considered a waste. And then he says, this is related by Ahmed and Ibn Majah, uh, and the author says that it's a weak chain, um, and the, uh, he doesn't mention the defect or anything. The defect in this chain is that it contains a narrator, a narrator named Abdullah ibn Lahia. Um, we talked about him before. Uh, the strongest opinion of the scholars concerning him is that he's weak. So all of his ahadith are weak. It doesn't matter uh, when he narrated or who he narrated from. So for example, some of the scholars say that his ahadith or Abdullah bin Lahia's ahadith would be authentic if, if, if he narrates from the Abadila, who is Abdullah uh, ibn al-Mubarak and uh, a few other uh, narrators. Others say that they're weak all the time and some differentiate and say uh, you know that they're weak all the time but more weak when it comes from those who are, weren't from the Abadil or weren't from the people named Abdullah the strongest opinion is that he's weak regardless of when and that was the opinion of Yahya bin Ma'in um, and others so this hadith is weak, it's not usable um, uh, and that's the reason why um, the next thing that he says is extravagance is to use water without any benefit, like washing the parts more than three times. Um, and then he says, Ibn Shu'aib's hadith quoted earlier illustrates this point. So the hadith that he's referring to earlier was the one in which the Prophet ﷺ performed wudu and then said, هَذَا الْوُضُوْ فَمَنْ زَادَ عَلَى هَذَا فَقَدْ أَسَاءَ وَظَلَمْ or فَقَدْ أَسَاءَ وَتَعَدَّ وَظَلَمْ or that the Prophet ﷺ performed wudu once and then he did everything three times except for the uh, head and the ears, and then he said, this is the wudu. So whoever goes beyond this, then he has done wrong and oppressed and transgressed. Um, so that's the hadith that he's referring to. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, so that's the, what he mentions about that hadith. The next thing that he says is, وَعَنْ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ بْنِ مُغَفَّلْ رضي الله عنه قال سمعت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إنه سيكون في هذه الأمة قوم يعتدون أو يعتدون في الطهور والدعاء or that Abdullah ibn Mughaffal narrated that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said indeed there will be from this ummah people who transgress when it comes to uh, purification and dua and then he says uh, that this is narrated by Ahmad and Abu Dawood and An Nasai. Um, so that's what he says about this hadith. There's a dispute about this hadith, the authenticity of it. Um, and Imam Al Nawawi and Ibn Mulaqin and Ibn Hajar accepted it as being authentic, um, but others have rejected the hadith based upon uh, the fact that there's some defects in it, including uh, there's a break in the chain, uh, as, as well as some other. Uh, uh, weaknesses to this to this hadith and then he continues and says al-bukhari said the scholars do not like one to use water beyond what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used for wudu so this is the end of what the author mentions with regards to economizing water or not wasting water so he mentions the authentic hadith of anas that describes what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to use and he mentions also the authentic one from uh, abdullah ibn abbas in which a man came and asked him, and then also the authentic one that he refers to before, in which the Prophet ﷺ performed wudu, and then uh, said whoever goes beyond this till the end of the hadith. Um, so this is uh, essentially what the uh, author mentioned. So the next point that we'll go on to is what are the opinions on this? What do we say about someone who wastes water? Uh, is it something that's disliked? Is it something that's haram? Or what's the actual ruling on it? So the first opinion is that um, conserving water is considered from the etiquettes of wudu. So it's not necessarily obligatory to conserve it or haram to waste it, but it would be uh, considered something that's, um, you know, it, it, it's not from the, the correct manners of wudu to waste water. And that's the opinion of the ahnaf. Uh, they hold that someone um, wasting water or using more, is they're, not, they're just not doing it properly. It's not necessarily haram, but something that they shouldn't do. The second is that it's considered makruh or disliked to um, waste water or to use too much water. Um, and that's the opinion of the, of the majority of the scholars. So they say if someone wasted water, it's not necessarily haram, but they're doing something that would be disliked. Um, so meaning if they intentionally economize their water and try to use 
a, a small amount of water as possible, then they would be rewarded for that. Um, the third opinion is that it's haram um, if the water is given to you as waqf. So meaning that if, you're come, if you come to the masjid and you're using water uh, that doesn't belong to you, it's been given, <coughs> it's been given in charity to the muslimin to use, then at this point it would be haram. If it's your own water, then it would be considered uh, makruh. Um, and that the reason for that is, if, you, if it's your own property, you have the right to do with it whatever you want, as long as it's not haram in and of itself. But when something belongs to the muslimin and you start playing around with it, and it's been given to the muslimin as, uh, you know, muslimin have given their wealth for other muslimin to use something for an ibadah, you can't then just start playing around with it. So if someone came to the masjid and, you know, just let the water run, this would be something that would be haram. Because now you're, it's not your money to waste. It belongs, someone gave it for a specific reason and now it's not being put to that reason. Um, uh, and this is something that Imam Ibn Nujaym, who's from the Imams of the Ahnaf, he said that this, there's, no, there's no dispute on this issue. Um, so when it comes to the issue of waqf uh, and water being given as waqf, that this would be considered something that's haram. Otherwise, it would be considered makruh when it's your own water. Um, the last opinion is that it's haram regardless. So whether it belongs to waqf uh, of the muslimin or if it's your own wealth or if you're at someone else's house or anything like this, that it would be haram in any case. Um, and that was the opinion of Imam Ibn Taymiyyah and Al-Mutawalli who was from the Imams of the Shafi'iyyah. Um, uh, also Imam Al-Baghawi uh, and some others as well. What they hold to is they say that the Prophet Sallallahu yes, he used a specific amount of water for wudu. But this doesn't necessarily prove that it's haram to use more. What the evidence is, is when Allah SWT said, وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا or, And do not waste uh, wealth, or do not waste. So any type of waste that's unnecessary would be haram. Just like if someone began to just throw food in the garbage. They went and, and, and someone could say, well that's, your own, that's my own wealth, I can do what I want. But Allah SWT forbid us from doing this. So just like it would be haram with uh, water for wudu, it would be haram with spending way too much money on clothing, uh, throwing out food when there's no reason, and so on and so on. So any sort of, um, would be, any sort of waste would be haram. Um, and then also there's, the, there's a difference between someone using more water than they need and between someone performing the acts of wudu or the, the number of wudu more than one time. So for example, if someone washes every limb three times each except for the head and the ears and they just use more water than they need this is one issue as opposed to someone who washed everything four times or washed everything you know, either three or four or five and went beyond because now one would be you're actually going uh, beyond what you should be doing specifically with an act of worship as opposed to performing the act of worship correctly and just using more water so the worst of the two would be uh, doing the things more than more than three times because now you're using obviously you're using more water than you needed to because you don't need to even do that fourth or fifth or however many washes and also you're adding something to the act of worship so there's two uh, there's two um, things that were are wrong with that so when the author said that it's either it can be from using too much water or washing things more more than one time that's correct but they're not exactly at the same level. Um, so th th this is uh, about the uh, amount for, um, for wudu or not uh, wasting when it comes to wudu. And likewise, the same thing would be for uh, ghusl as well. The next thing that the author says is supplication while performing wudu or making the adhkar related to wudu. So he mentions the first hadith, he says, قَالَ أَبُو مُوسَى رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ أَتَيْتُ النَّبِيَ صَلُّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَتَوَضَّأَ فَسَمِعْتُهُ يَقُولُ اللهم اغفر لي ذنبي ووسع لي في داري وبارك لي في رزقي قلت يا نبي الله لقد سمعتك تدعو بكذا وكذا قال وهل تركنا من شيء or he narrates the author mentions a hadith so. what's the majority opinion on the wasting whether it's haram or the majority is that it's makruh the majority opinion is yeah. makruh Allah alam the strong is the, the, the last opinion that it's haram, haram so Ibn Taymiyyah and Al-Baghawi and Al-Mutawalli and, yeah. Who takes the third opinion that it's haram doesn't belong to you? It's, essentially there's a consensus on it. 
it was mentioned by Ibn Nujaym from the Imams of the Ahnaf. Um, so the author, he mentions this hadith from Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, um, radiallahu anhu, uh, that he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he was performing wudu, or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was performing wudu. So after he finished, he heard him say, um, which translates as is, O oh Allah, uh, forgive me my sins, make my residence spacious for me, uh, and bless me in my provisions. So I said to O oh Prophet of Allah, uh, and uh, or I, I heard you perform, uh, making dua with such and such and such and such. So he mentioned the dua. So then the Prophet ﷺ said, "Was anything left out?" Meaning, like I've you know co- have I is there anything that I haven't covered? So then the author says, and this is related by An-Nasai and, and Ibn Sunni um, with a Sahih chain. And then he says, "And Nawawi includes this event under the chapter. What is to be said after one completes wudu?" And Ibn Sunni has it under what is to be said when one is in the state of wudu. So, uh, the, he, so what he's saying is that there's a dispute on this du'a. Allahumma wasta'li fi dari this this hadith here. There's a dispute as to whether is this to be said after wudu or is it to be said while someone is performing wudu. So uh, he says, uh, and now we included it in this, and Ibn Sunni included it in a different um, way. Um, and then now we also said that it could be um, applied to both. So meaning that it's also possible to say that it could be, be it could be being it could be said while performing wudu or it could be said um, after uh, the wudu. So that's what the author says here about the du'a while performing wudu. Um, so about this, the first thing to um, to say is that this hadith it wasn't narrated by Imam and Nasa'i in. Sunan. So he, the author says, uh, or the author doesn't mention where an Nasai narrated it. So one of the rules when it comes to fiqh, or even when it comes to other issues, that the scholars have kind of, it's become the custom of the, the scholars when they say, it narrated by so-and-so. So for example, Imam al-Bukhari has many books. He has a Sahih, he has Amal, uh, he has Khalq uh, al Ibad, and he has a book called um, Al Adab al Mufrad and Al Tariq al Kabir, and many other books. When someone says narrated by Al Bukhari, it's become the custom that uh, you, what comes to mind is it's his Sahih. So if someone just says narrated by Al Bukhari, the correct thing is it should only be a, this phrase should only be said when it comes to his Sunan or sorry to his Sahih, because that's what the custom is. Likewise, Imam al Nasa'i has a number of books. He has uh, Sunan al Kabir or Sunan al Kubra. He has a Sunan al Sughra that's also called, called al Mujtaba. Um, and he has a book called Amal al Yawmi wal Layla or the deeds of the, the day and the night. So here the author said narrated by Imam al Nasa'i. It's not so when someone says narrated by Nasa'i, the first thing that it, or it should only be applied this this way when it's narrated in in al Mujtaba or Sun as Sunan al Sughra. But here it's it's actually it's actually not narrated in a Sunan. It's narrated uh, in Amal al Yomi wal Layla. So that's the first point uh, to put here. Secondly, this hadith is weak. Um, the narrator from Abu Musa al Ash'ari, radiAllahu anhu, in this chain is named Abu Majlis. Um, and he didn't hear from him. So there's a break in the chain between the two. Um, thirdly, the correct narration of this hadith says that it's related to the salat and not to wudu. Because the correct one is narrated by Tabarani that he said he performed wudu, then he prayed and then he said, and then it says the hadith. So there's a number of problems with this whole uh, subsection here. The Summary of all of it is that there's nothing authentic from the Prophet ﷺ about saying anything while you're performing wudu. So the only things that are authentic uh, from the Prophet ﷺ with regards to uh, adhkar or uh, supplications with wudu is that they come after the uh, wudu. So that's the, the I guess the the section that the author mentions about supplication while performing the wudu. Next he says supplication or uh, the dhikr after performing wudu. He narrates the hadith from, uh, he says, An Umar, radiallahu anhu, قال, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, ما منكم من أحد يتوضأ فيس, فيسبغ الوضوء ثم يقول, أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له, 
وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله إلا إلا فتحت له أبواب الجنة الثمانية يدخل من أيها شاء وذات عمر رضي الله عنه narrated uh, that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said uh, if any of you performs or none of you performs wudu and does so correctly and then says أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ Except that uh, the eight gates of Jannah will be open for him and that he'll enter into any of them that he wishes or through any of them that he wishes. And then he says related by Muslim. Um, so this is uh, the narration of Muslim. And then he continues and says, uh, or he mentions a second narration, عَنْ أَبِي سَعِيدٍ رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال من توضأ فقال سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك كتب, كتب له في رق ثم طبع بطابع فلم يكسر إلى يوم القيامة or that um, Abu Sa'id رضي الله عنه الخدري narrated that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said whoever performs wudu then says uh, سبحانك, الله, الله, or, سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك that this will be written down, or it will be it will be written down for him and placed on a tablet, which will not be broken until the day of resurrection. And he says this hadith is related by Tabarani and Al Ausat, and its narrators are the narrators of the Sahih. Um, so to comment on this hadith of the author, there's a dispute about this hadith as to whether it's from the Prophet وسلم, or whether it's from Abu Sa'id Al Khudri. Um, the stronger opinion is that it isn't, it's not authentic from the Prophet ﷺ. The furthest that we would say is that it belongs to Abu Sa'id al-Khudri. Um, and that was the opinion of Imam al-Nasai and Imam al Dara Qutni, um, who are from the major Imams of Hadith. So they stated that this doesn't, doesn't belong to the words of the Prophet ﷺ. And then the author continues, uh, and he says, And al Nasai narrated it, and at the end he said, Khutima alayha bi khatimin. فَوُضِعَتْ تَحْتَ الْعَرْشِ فَلَمْ يُكْسَرْ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Or that um, he says, and Nasai narrated it and at the end it says it will be stamped with a seal placed below the throne, so the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it will not be broken until the day of resurrection. Um, and he says the correct statement is that it's mawquf. Um, uh, yeah, so this is, and again, Allahu alam about the authenticity of this. It's definitely not from the Prophet sallallahu statements. And then the last point that the author says is, as for the supplication, Allahumma ja'alni min al-tawwabin wa ja'alni min al-mutatahhirin, or O Allah, make me from those who perform or who repent, and make me from those who are purified. Then he says, um, it was narrated by a tirmidhi who said, its chain is mutarib, and there is nothing authentic concerning this. Um, uh, so he's the, the author's mentioning it because it's it's one of the more widespread du'as that people say. So they say the the correct one, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, to the end, and then they say, Allah majalni min al-tawabin, wajalni min al-mutatahirin. Then he mentions the the statement of Imam al-Tirmidhi that it's mutarib. So mutarib means uh, that there's some confusion as to whether it's. So sometimes it's been narrated. Um, correctly and other times it's it's been narrated or it's not narrated or sometimes it's narrated attributed to one person and another time it's attributed to a different person so this means this causes the uh, a weakness in the chain because it can't be differentiated as to who this phrase belonged to but in reality there is other um, defects in this um, plus it contradicts the correct narration from Omar رضي الله عنه in which this has the dua أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله to the end so this dua or this dhikr اللهم اجعلني من التوابين it's not authentic um, from the Prophet صلى الله عليه or even from the Sahaba so a person shouldn't say that because all that's confirmed from him is the shahada so this is where the person should stop and shouldn't go um, beyond this yeah it's to the companion yeah. So the, the one other point to mention, or a few other points to mention about the adhkar, is that some of the ahnaf, they say that it's recommended to say the salat on the Prophet ﷺ each time you wash a limb. So when you wash your face, you say, Allahumma salli ala Nabiina Muhammad, 
when you wash your arms, you say the same thing. When you wash your feet, so on, and so on and so on. Um, there's nothing authentic from the Prophet ﷺ for, for this. So, um, Allahu alam what the basis for that is for those of the Ahnaf that say this. Really, there's nothing authentic, and as far as I can find, there's nothing even narrated for that. Um, so the person shouldn't say anything like that. Likewise, also some of the Ahnaf um, say that it's recommended to say the Tasmiya or to say Bismillah when they begin each um, each limb. Um, Allahu alam. There's nothing authentic for that, and possibly the you know the the argument or the evidence that they're using is the Hadith that we talked about before. كُلُّ أَمْرٍ ذِي بَعْلٍ لَا يُبْدَأُ فِي بِبِسْمِ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ أَقْطَعُ Or that every uh, matter of importance that isn't begun with the Bismillah, then it's a void of all barakah. Um, and again, we talked about this hadith. It's a, it's a weak hadith. There's nothing authentic from the Prophet ﷺ about saying Bismillah before every action. Um, so that could be what they are basing it on. Also, some say that you should uh, recite Surah Al-Qadr after every wudu, there's nothing for this as well. Um, uh, it's based on a hadith that was narrated by Daylami, um, and it's 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 weak. It has a uh, an unknown narrator, um, and this whole issue was talked about um, Imam Ibn talked about by Imam Ibn Hajar al Um So this is the uh, end of the issue with the Alkar. So again, the only thing that's narr- there's nothing authentic while performing wudu. The only thing that's authentic after wudu is saying the shahada, the long form of the shahada, um, and that, and then again, like we talked about before, the basmala uh, isn't authentic before the wudu. So really, we only have something after wudu, which is uh, that the long uh, shahada. Um, next, the author says, praying two rak'ah after wudu. He narrates the hadith from Abu Huraira radiAllahu anhu. أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لبلال عند صلاة الفجر يا بلال حدثني بأرجى عمل عملته في الإسلام فإني سمعت دفن عليك بين يدي في الجنة قال ما عملت عملا أرجى عندي أني لم أتطهر طهورا في ساعة من الليل أو ساعة الليل أو نهار إلا صليت بذلك الطهور ما كتب لي uh, or that Abu Huraira narrated that uh, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, asked Bilal radiallahu anhu at Salat al-Fajr one time he said, O Bilal, tell me about the best good deed that you've done in Islam because I hear your footsteps or more particularly the, the sound of your, uh, of your sandals in front of me in Jannah so Bilal radiallahu anhu said, um, there's no good deed that is more beloved to me or more ho- that I'm more hopeful in when I perform it, except that I never perform wudu at any time of the day or the night, except that after it I perform um, whatever is written for me to perform from the salat. So meaning that after every wudu he would perform at least two rak'ahs, um, and this hadith is narrated, or the author says, narrated by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Um, and then he narrates the next hadith and says, وَعَنْ عُقْبَةِ إِبْنِ عَامِرِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قَالْ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَا مِنْ مُسْلِمٍ يَتَوَضَّأْ فَيُحْسِنُ الْوُضُوءُ أَوْ فَيُحْسِنُ وُضُوءَهُ ثُمَّ يَقُومُ فَيُصَلِّ رَكْعَتَيْنٍ مُقْبِلٌ عَلَيْهِمَا بِقَلْبِهِ وَوَجْهِهِ إِلَّا وَجَبَتْ لَهُ الْجَنَّةِ or that Uqbah ibn Amr said that the Prophet ﷺ said there is no Muslim who performs wudu and does so correctly, then stands up and performs two rak'ahs uh, with his, where, where his, his heart and his face is completely into it, except that the, the um, jannah becomes obligatory for him or becomes from his right. And he says, narrated by Muslim and Abu Dawood and Ibn Majah, um, and Ibn Khuzayma and his Sahih. So this is another hadith uh, talking about the two rak'ahs. <coughs> and then the last hadith that he mentions, he says, أن حمران مولى عثمان أخبره أنه رأى عثمان ابن عفان دعا بإناء فأفرغ على كفيه ثلاث مرار or that Humran, the client or the, the free slave or the, um, the servant of Uthman said that I saw uh, Uthman call for water for wudu. 
he poured it into a pot onto from a pot onto his right hand, um, and then it mentions what he how he performed wudu, um, and then at the end um, it says uh, it says that um, the Prophet ﷺ said man tawadda nahwa wudu yhada, thumma salla rak'atain la yuhadithu fihi ma nafsahu ghufir lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbih. Or that um, the Prophet Sallallahu after he performed this wudu, he then said, whoever performs the likeness of this wudu, um, and then performs two rak'ahs, not, uh, and he doesn't uh, think about anything else while he's performing them, then all of his previous sins would be, um, would be uh, forgiven. And he says, related by Al-Bukhari and Muslim and others. And then he says, other practices, uh, he says, such as protecting the eyes, uh, and wrinkles, removing any rings, so meaning protecting, so meaning making sure that the water gets into the wrinkles and, and, and per, a person isn't negligent about certain areas of their face or their arms or, or their feet. Um, removing any rings, wiping the neck and so on have not been mentioned, um, have not been mentioned here as their narrations are still questionable, but one may follow them as a general uh, part of cleanliness. Um, so again, we talked about the issue of removing rings and jewelry. Uh, wiping the neck will leave. There's no, the, the strongest opinion is that there's nothing authentic on it. Um, washing inside of the eyes, that's narrated from Abdullah bin Umar. There's a narration from that, that he used to wash in, like, into his eyes, so with actual eyeballs, he would make sure the water got onto it. Um, other, some of the Sahaba kind of rejected this on him and said that he was going too far, um, and the, because there's nothing authentic from, from the Prophet Sallallahu doing so. Um, uh, yeah, so this is some of the stuff that the author talked about. Um, next, I'll just add some final points on the Sunan, but inshallah we'll leave that till next time. So we'll, next time we'll finish the part, some of the issues we got related to the Sunan of Wudu, and then we'll get into the Nawaqil or the nullifications of Wudu, and so we'll stop there. Wallahu alam.